Hello, electromagnetic field. That's a lukewarm response. Hello, electromagnetic field. Hey. <laughs> For those of you who don't know me, I am Matt Gray. I'm at Matt Gray Yes on all of the socials. And I've, I've been on that there YouTube for a bit. So I spent a lot of time on social media, doing a lot of the scrolling, especially in the last couple of years, sat at home with nothing much to do. Hands up if you've spent a little bit too long doing the scrolling. That is everyone. I think that is everyone. Wow. So I am going to talk about my three steps to try and help stop doing the doom scroll, spending all of your time on it, because I'm, we're all guilty of it. We've all spent, spent too long doing it. Sounds too easy. OK, the three steps. Number one, live. Number two, laugh. Number three, love. <laughs> nah. <laughs> First step is remove the doom. Step two, stop yourself from scrolling. And step three is find the reason that you are scrolling. So I'm going to go through each of those three steps. Now, you are seeing this, this presentation without slides. But I did only make the slides this morning because I'm used to having the advantage of video editing to support me. And I do that after I've done all the talking and I, I chop it all up so then all the good bits remain. So you're going to get to see the bad bits too. And I'm, I'm still on the path of recovery from uh, post-viral fatigue at the moment. So there might be a moment where I just start buffering. <laughs> so if I start buffering, you can fill that gap by giving me a round of applause. <laughs> so <laughs> that'll take you long enough. And I'll maybe get a moment to think about what I'm trying to say. And then I'll be back again. <laughs> so social networks. I'm intrigued. Out of all of the ones that we've got about at the moment, which ones do you use? On the count of three, all of you at once, just yell what social network you use the most. Three, two, one. So I heard more Twitters than anything there. I thought that was going to be useless, but I heard a lot of Twitters. Wow. So hands up for Twitter. That's the majority of people. Uh, Facebook. Two people at the back there. Instagram. About half. TikTok. About the same as Instagram. Snapchat. One person at the back there. And finally, Friends Reunited. One person. <laughs> I didn't even know it still existed. So for me, the main thing I use is uh, Twitter and Instagram. It's probably just a sign of my age. They're the ones that have been around since long time. There's the buffering. <laughs> <laughs> I had already forgotten I'd said that. <laughs> So step one, remove the Zoom. So my experience is with Twitter mainly and Instagram. So I'm going to focus on that kind of thing. But you can use these points on anything else you might be using. So first thing on Twitter, you can remove the Doom. You're scrolling. There's a load of crap there. There'll be the odd person that you always scroll past their posts and you never read them. Just unfollow them. Why? And. The best thing about Twitter and most social media right now is that friendship is not mutual. If someone that you know follows you, you do not have to follow them back. And if they ask you about it, they go, nah, don't want that. I see you in real life. Done. <laughs> and if, for whatever political reason, you have to follow them back, it's just going to make life easier, then you can mute them. They don't know that. More about muting later. So you don't have to read every post either. So once you've unfollowed all the people that you're scrolling past, well, you've got less to scroll anyway. And there is no point being completionist about the internet. You are never going to finish the internet. There will always be more internet. Has anyone here completed the internet? No, no, no one's completed the internet. So it's not going to happen. I used to try and complete the internet. I don't know why. I think it was just habitual scrolling. I'd get home from work at the end of the day and scroll Twitter until I ran out. It didn't do me any good. I didn't feel better at the end of it. So you've just got to try and notice if you're doing that. 
then maybe try not to. There are more tools, though, that can help you. So Twitter, you can turn off retweets. If you didn't know that, on a person, if there's someone that's always retweeting something, turn it off. You'll only see the stuff that they're actually posting. And recognize some of the stuff that's getting slipped into feeds these days. So there's suggested posts, there's ads, fake notifications. Like you get a notification because, hey, um, you last did this a year ago. It's not to remind you of the thing, they're not being nice. It's giving you that little rush of, oh, I've got a thing, I've got something to look at. Like, Facebook is horrific at this. I rarely use Facebook, but when I do log in, there's always a hundred notifications about bollocks that doesn't matter. I'm never gonna click any of them. LinkedIn's the same, not that I actually use that, but that's always full of notifications whenever I rarely check it. And Twitter does it in subtle ways too. Like, you can get a notification for every single time a tweet is liked. Now, I realize that's a, more of a problem in my end of things. As soon as you get more than maybe 10,000 followers, Twitter gets a little overwhelming. You don't need 10,000 people's opinion on everything you post. <laughs> um, and... <laughs> <laughs> that works. <laughs> um, the official Twitter app is awful at it as well. So the majority of my feed on the official Twitter app, it's likes, it's trends, it's big news. Um, I don't go on social media to work out what's happening. I work in the media, I hear news throughout my day job all day, every day. I get my news from reading different um, newspapers, websites, I get it from... I try and get a wide range of spectrum of opinions so I can form my own opinion. Whereas Twitter, I follow things that make me laugh, give me a break from the real world, because I spend the whole time in the real world. The internet has always been my escape. And then as soon as big news happens, it starts coming in. And if Twitter's only showing me things people are liking and big trends, then that means the news dominates the feed. Um, and then Instagram's got a little bit better with the random crap it's sh shoving in your feed. Um, I realize their algorithm seems to be completely different for everyone, but for me, I can reach the bottom of Instagram. I get the bottom and goes, no, nope, you've seen everything for the last three days. That's it. it <laughs> and it doesn't show me anymore, which is quite good. But I was sat next to someone two days ago and it didn't do that for them, so who knows? Facebook, eh? Uh, the other way of removing the doom is muting. So I don't use the official Twitter app, I use Tweetbot. Um, it's iOS and Mac only, so sorry if you don't use them, I'm sure there's another alternative. But it has the advantage that you can mute users, you can mute specific phrases, you can mute um, hashtags. So I have mute filters set up for um, politicians' names, uh, words ab about nasty things that happen in the news, like violent acts, war, TV shows that I don't care about. None of that ends up in my Twitter feed. I'm specifically creating my own filter bubble, so then I don't see the nasty stuff and it can still be an escape. And that has taken me effort to do, but I have a much better time of it. I can have a break from the real world. And I create this filter bubble knowing that it's not my main source of news. So I've got things in, like, at the moment, Putin, NFT. I will never see anything that's saying NFT. It makes the internet a much better place. <laughs> oh, uh, words like resmog, referendum, hashtag apprentice. Um, I'm just scrolling through some of them now. Hashtag BBUK. When was the last time Big Brother was even on? I haven't, I ha don't go through and clear them out. GBBO 2017. I should probably go through and clear them out because, yeah. Harry and, hashtag Harry and Meghan. Hashtag F1. People who like F1 seem to be the type of people who don't tweet. They tweet the odd thing and then the F1 comes on. I don't see any of them because they're nice. They hashtag them. I've muted that hashtag. It's great. And these features are also available on other platforms. So Instagram, you can press and hold on someone's story at the top, um, and you can mute either their story or their whole profile. So you can do it so then you won't see just the story things. 
or you won't see anything from them, but you're still following them. That's useful if you've got the political friendship reasons why you have to follow them, otherwise they'd be sad. But you don't have to follow them, just unfollow them. Doesn't mean you don't talk to them anymore. Um, YouTube has similar as well, so you'll get lots of recommendations of videos you might want to watch on YouTube. I will occasionally get lots of recommendations. Let's say I watched a video with some Lego in it. Lego is one of those topics that as soon as I watch one video on it, that's all it wants to recommend to me. Same with solar power. You suddenly get from one type of electronic engineering and bam, you're in van life. <laughs> Everything's vans and you can't escape. Oh God, it's gone into composting toilet mode. <laughs> and I don't want to go any further than some composting toilet mode. I like my porcelain, actually. I think plumbing is great. But what you can do is you can click the little dot, 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 and you can click don't recommend channel or not interested. And it goes, nah, I don't like that topic. Do it on two videos, it goes, ah, oh, he doesn't want to spend four hours on a composting toilet build montage? And then it stops showing me it. It's nice. It makes it, makes it a better place. TikTok as well. OK, not so many of you here are using it. I kind of like TikTok. Very addictive. It's an infinite scroll, so it's dangerous in that respect. But I find its algorithm is much better than any other social medias at working out what I want to watch and showing me more of it. I think it bases it a lot on dwell time and how long you're watching a thing. But if you press and hold a video on TikTok, there's the not interested bu button. For some reason, two weeks ago, it just kept showing me car crashes. <laughs> Why is anyone uploading car crashes? I don't know. I said not interested on two of them, and it stopped showing them. It's actually, it's great. You, you can craft what you're seeing online to not be the crap you don't want to see, and makes the whole thing just a lot better, and means you're less likely just to keep Scrolling and scrolling forever for no reason. So we move on from stop, stop, step one to step two. So you've removed the doom, you've unfollowed people, you've muted everything, now you need to stop scrolling. You can do it for a bit, just you remember, yes, you starting to scroll the socials is easy. The hard bit is stopping. So that's step two. Staying up to date on current affairs, it's fine, it's great, great thing to do, but you don't have to be immersed in it 24 seven. There will always be more news, there will always be more internet. You will never complete the internet, you will never complete the news. Stay up to date, check it every so often, but you don't have to keep refreshing to get the latest. Dip in, get a bit of it, and then you can leave again. Like I was saying, I try and keep, treat the internet as my escape from the real world, because there's enough bullshit out here without it needing to be in your safe space in your bedroom, just as you're falling asleep, seeing all the shit that's going on everywhere. Um, and one thing that can help with this, like saying stop scrolling, yeah, yeah, that's really useful, yeah. But there are tools you can use to help you with that. So screen time settings is what it's called in iOS. I'm pretty sure it's called screen time settings as well in Android. I don't know, I've never used one. But you can tell your phone, oi, when I spent too long on this app, tell me not to. <laughs> and you can get it to set a password and stuff on it. And I did, like, in the last few weeks and over the whole COVID thing, I've actually got a hurty thumb from the amount that I've been on my phone. Got more time spent sat inside, we sat on the sofa board because, yes, we haven't been able to sit with each other in a field talking about geeky stuff. So my thumb has spent so long in this position here, it hurts. So I've done things to stop me scrolling too much, and now it hurts less. And you can end up in a habit loop of um, just constantly refreshing the same thing over and over. Just open that up, then I open that up, then I open that, and you just end up in a loop. I rejiggled all of the apps on my home screen so I can't find them anymore. That works wonders. I deleted the ones that are crap. I logged out of them. I turned on these screen time settings. So um, after one hour in Twitter official app or Tweetbot, it'll go, nope, you spent too long in this app, it's now locked. You can enter in a password and we'll give you one minute or 15 minutes on it, or we'll unlock it for the entire day. 
But that's a reminder. If you keep, yes, I'll end up going 15 minutes, 15 minutes, 15 minutes, but it's like a slap around the face every time I keep doing it. And eventually it makes me stop a bit quicker than I would have done otherwise. And you can do that for a specific apps or for categories. So you can do it for all social media or everything on your phone. Hell, I even got into a point a few years ago where I was habitually refreshing Facebook on my computer so much. It was just a habit. There was nothing there. I didn't even like it. I, it was just in a habit from it, from having used it for 15 years. I ended up setting up a host file on my computer that pointed facebook.com to localhost. It just didn't work anymore, and I kept doing the action, and it just kept giving me nothing, and then I slowly weaned myself out of that. So it kind of did the job. And then number three. You have removed the doom. You have stopped yourself from scrolling. And then the final bit is, find the reason that you're scrolling. There's nothing wrong with spending time on things, but if you're putting your all into it, or if you're lying awake until 3 a.m. constantly scrolling, keep an eye on yourself. It's easy for it to become a habit. I've spoken about how that became a habit for me, and it, it, the only way you can get out of that kind of habit is by noticing it. Or I've used it when I've been stressed or depressed. It's a, it's a distraction. You're not thinking about that anymore. And you can't distract yourself forever. Your mental health is as important as your physical health, so you need to take the same amount of care for it. Um, and if you need help with that, get it. Your friends will be happy to talk to you about it. And if not, then we have a wonderful health service here. They'll be able to help you too. And then finally, we've got the three steps. So you've removed the doom. There's less shit in front of you for you to scroll through. So there's nice stuff there. You're not going to be scrolling as often, and hopefully you keep an eye on yourself and you're not doing it for the wrong reasons to cover up the crap that's hiding in the back of your mind. Then you've got to remember, the stuff that you're seeing on social media is all cherry-picked. It's not the full aspect of the person. People are a brand. You even do it yourself. When you post a photo online, you're not just picking any picture. You're going, oh, which one's the good one? Oh, oh look at that and that one. I'm not going to use that one. Oh, my eye's doing something funny in that one. Everyone does that. People are a brand. You will see someone's photos. You'll see someone's post. It looks like they're having fun all the time. Because why would you share the crap? You're going to share the stuff you're excited about. So you've got to remember that's not the full aspect of a person. Or if someone's annoyed one day about a thing and complaining about a thing, it doesn't necessarily mean it's their all. And same with beauty standards as well, like I was saying. It's one of 50 photos that someone's posted. If they're a, a beauty influencer or a fashion influencer, just before you let any of this kind of thing embed itself inside you, you've got to remember to take that as what it is. It, it is a brand. It is marketing. It's just this new, well, not really new. Oh, I've been on social media for 12 years now, haven't I? Let's call it new. In the grand scheme of the universe, it's the new way of marketing humans at each other. So there you go, that's it really. That's my waffle about how not to get embedded too much in the socials. Remove the doom, stop yourself from scrolling, and try not to do it for the wrong reasons. I am Matt Gray. I am Matt Gray, yes, on all the socials, mattg.co.uk. And I will not be around immediately after this talk because I've got to rush off, but come find me, come say hi. I'm going to be around for the rest of the weekend. And in the lounge, which is the white tents near the bar, I have a pile of Game Boys and a Game Boy camera that's connected to a dot matrix printer. You can go there now, you go have a play with them. They're free to play. Uh, I like Game Boys. So feel free to have a play with them. And that is it. Thank you.